everybody. Welcome to Rex Engine. I wanted to show you guys a brand new feature in the new Rex Engine 1.57. Now this feature is the ability to make enemies that fly in a curving pattern. So before you could only do straight lines essentially, or you could do like Medusa heads where you had the sine wave. But this feature is a swooping movement, which lets you have one movement that has a single arc to it. So if you think about, for example, the first boss in Castlevania 1, where it's the giant bat that we shamelessly ripped off right here, where it doesn't just fly in a straight line towards the player. It moves in this kind of arcing, curving swoop. And this is going to let you do the same thing with your enemies. So let's get into it. So we've got this enemy right here, the Bat Dactyl, our robot dinosaur version of Castlevania 1's first boss. And I'm going to click on his AI routine object. And if you don't have that on your enemy, that's always available via tools, Rex Engine, add AI. And that'll give you the below AI routine object. So I'm going to click on the AI routine, and under movements in the inspector, I'm going to hit add movement. And I'm going to choose swoop movement from the menu. So if I click on swoop, we can see in the inspector there's a ton of options here. We've got a lot of pretty standard stuff. There's repeating, we can make this either go once, or we can make it loop endlessly. If we make it loop, we can set the amount of time between the swoops, or we can randomize that time if we want to. For this video, I'm just going to do one time, at least for now. If we choose to make it only happen once, we can slot in an AI sequence to play when the swooping motion is complete. So if I had a sequence here, for example, where the enemy shot a fireball, like Castlevania 1's boss does once in a blue moon, I could slot that in to play su sequence on complete, and it would play that. Um, we'll leave that blank for the time being. And moving on, we've got the duration box. This is how long in frames it takes for the swoop to finish. So more frames means a slower swoop. Less frames, quicker swoop. Or randomized frames, you can do anything in between. Um, for right now, we'll leave that at just a static 100 frames. The curve is going to let you change the amount of curvature the swoop has. Higher numbers means a more exaggerated curving motion in the swoop. Uh, like everything else here, that can be randomized. You can set a, min a minimum or a maximum. Um, generally speaking, I think these values are best left between 0 and 0 0.5. If you make them too high, you'll get some really big, kind of erratic, kind of crazy swooping patterns. Um, but I think 0 to 0 0.5 will give you kind of a nice crispy video gamey arc. Um, you can also set this to a negative number if you want the swoop to move upwards rather than downwards. Target type is what the swoop is going to move towards. Um, so if we set this to explicit, we also have the option to set it to random. Random means, actually I'll get into random in a second. Random means essentially it can go towards random targets or random values. Explicit means the swoop is happening towards a certain target. So if we have explicit set, underneath that we have the target type. And from the dropdown we can choose either the player, or we can type in the name of the object it should swoop towards, or we can just slot in a transform and have it swoop towards that transform. For the time being, let's leave that set to player. Use only target x is if you want it to only take the target's x value into account when it's figuring out its target. So for example, if you've got a character that's jumping a lot, that's going to be a different y values, but you don't want it to take that into account. You only want it to swoop toward the target's x position. Irregardless of its y position, you can click this. Um, I actually am going to click that for the time being. Limit swoop distance is Pretty straightforward, this is if you want the swoop distance to be only able to go a certain amount of distance. If you click that, it'll give you an x and a y value where you can type in the maximum amount of distance for the x and the y on the swoop. Minimum swoop distance is the opposite. Minimum swoop distance says, even if the target's really close, you can make sure the swoop only goes a certain distance. Or, I'm sorry, make sure the swoop goes at minimum a certain distance. Um, so for example, this is, say your enemy is right on top of the player, it wouldn't really do much of a swoop because there's nothing far away to swoop towards. 
but if you want it to make it if you want to make sure that every single swoop goes at least a certain distance you can give it a minimum distance um, and i think in fact if you try and put this below if you put this at zero it'll snap to 0 0.1 automatically because otherwise there's just no movement happening at all um, and lastly, bounds is going to give you the option if you want, uh, for example, we have this enemy here in this room, but if I hit play, you'll see that the, the arena itself is only really the size of the screen. And so by giving this bounds, I can make sure this guy is never going to swoop off of the screen. Um, so I'll just hit that and let's figure out you know, actually, let's not even bother with those for this video. Um, but it's a good feature to have. It's down here at the bottom if you want to use it. So when we tested this a minute ago, we saw we had this guy doing his swoop movement to the left. He's got kind of a slow, lazy-looking swoop in the direction of the player. Let me expand the screen a little bit. And if I move the player so he spawns to the right of the enemy, we should see that the bat is swooping to the right now rather than the left. Let's try playing with some of those values just to give you guys an idea of what they do. So firstly, let's check out duration. So right now we've got 100 frames. What if we want a really quick swoop? why don't we set this to 25 frames? So now it should complete in a quarter of the time. Or if we want something to take a really, really long time, let's try 400. And now we've got this really slow swoop. Um, I think most of these things should be pretty self-explanatory at this point, actually. Let's try a really big curve. Let's try 5. Oh, wow, I actually meant 0.5. 5 is going to give us a really big curve, so he just rams into the ground. <laughs> Let's try 0.5. There we go, so we can see that's a little bit more of a dramatic curve than we had before. Now let's try a negative value to make him swoop upwards. Now you notice in all of these, he's still swooping towards the exact same target point. So he's keeping the same endpoint, but the amount of curvature on, the, on basically the parabola he's taking to get there is changing. Let's try giving him a larger minimum swoop distance. Let's give it five maybe. So now we're going to see the swoop, he's actually going to end up at a further away point. So that's what the minimum does. Um, and lastly, why don't we try some repeating stuff just to show you guys what that looks like. So I'm going to set it to repeating. Um, I'll randomize the wait time. I'll give him maybe between 0.5 and, let's say, 2. Uh, we'll randomize the frames. Um, between 80 and 120, sure, that seems legit. Um, and we'll randomize the curve, let's say, between negative 0.5 and 0.5. So now we should see this guy doing lots of different swoops of different speeds, different arcs, but generally moving in the direction of the player. We saw he did a really slow one right there. So every one of these swoops is slightly different, but they're always moving towards us. Um, so originally I was actually going to do a complete tutorial on the Castlevania 1 boss because I played that way too many times getting the movement right for this. And I might still at some point, but what I decided was that I actually don't think that boss was programmed all that well. And its swoops are kind of erratic and kind of crazy. Like, sometimes it'll do a really tiny swoop. Sometimes it covers the entire screen in, like, two frames. Um, and I actually didn't think it felt that good, even though that's one of my favorite games. 
Um, and it's also got this fireball attack, which is kind of bizarre because I played the boss like a dozen times and it only actually shot the fireball at me like twice in all of those times. Um, so at the risk of rambling on that topic too much, maybe I'll do that video if there's demand for it. I don't know, let me know. But I'm not 100% sure. I'm hoping in the meantime this will do the trick for you guys. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll talk to you guys real soon.